Well, when I went to New Beginnings, I went because my old pal, Senator Pete Domenici, told me his son had this remarkable experiment out there. And so I, he said, if you're ever in town, maybe you could drop by. And they gave me the whole tour, and I spoke to two classes. I'm a caretaker. I take care of situations for my family. My mother, she might have to work a double. I look out for my, my, my sister. I look out for my family. I'm just a backbone. E-money! 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 Say now, say now, I'll tell you my, tell you my age while I'm here. I thought it was terrific, yeah. Uh, oh, but it was heavily secured. I couldn't believe it, you know, there were outer doors and inner doors, and I thought, I said, well, what have these guys done? Uh, you know, I mean, this is quite a facility. Well, they've, they've been sentenced to three years or five. My age is 17, mm -hmm. and I'm here for attempting to do a serious offense mm -hmm. against someone. Vinny, you too, Vinny. You too, Vinny. <laughs> he looks like a priest. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Father Vinny. Father Vinny. <laughs> right. So the old facility was essentially geared towards teaching young delinquents how to become old criminals. It was essentially a school for crime. And the kids knew it. I was put in the OQ first time, 2007. This is where they... They, their recreation yard was right there, that enclosed area. They didn't um, have recreation with the rest of the uh, population. I mean, the rooms were so hot that if they had asthma or, or were on psychotropic drugs, they could literally die. Right. There was no sprinkler system. Rats and cockroaches crawled on the kids at night, so they had to stuff their clothes around the toilets. It was just a nightmare. When I was in a situation where it was gates on windows and stuff, a lot of times I'd be angry. I wouldn't even know what I'm angry for. I wouldn't even know what I'm angry at. And the program, I think, matched the physical plant nightmare. I think people were doing things that peaked at uninteresting and phlegmatic uh, and bottomed out at abusive and neglectful. These were suicide, the two suicide rooms right here. So, you know, the system has to sort of move itself away from over-reliance on large, lock, secure confinement mm -hmm. to more reliance on small, locally-based, community-based, non-secure, and secure confinement. That takes a little time. Because at one time, yeah, remember, we talking maybe 260 residents at one time. How many are there now at the new facility? Oh, 60. 60. A little less than 60. Right. You restrain them, you lock them down, you handcuff them, you pepper spray them, and then nine months later you release them and say, go forth and sin no more? Well, you're not going to have four guards walking around with them when they get out into the community. These old rooms were more to punish the kids rather than rehabilitate them. They weren't model citizens when they left. We think what our reform effort is doing is helping these kids become uh, better citizens and more productive people when they leave here. A lot of our kids go to college after they leave here, which was unheard of back before the reform effort began. We came from Oak Hill over here around about March. The experience was like, my eyes was like, wow. I was looking everywhere like, man, what is this place? You know, I ain't never seen nothing like it. Going into New Beginnings Youth Development Center, which was named by a current employee who works in there. They gave your family 100% along the way. What you see here is the value system that we honor here at the Mayans Rule School, and this wall demonstrates all the behaviors that the scholars have been engaged in. You get, you get um, family team meetings on, on certain levels. You know, you get time to see your family a lot, visitation. You could still run a really lousy program in this beautiful building. Right. So let's not fool ourselves into thinking the building defines everything. I'm taking some college courses right now, beneficial activities here that I've been doing, football. 
I play basketball in the gym. I'm not on a team, but I play um, school work. Um, we, they have a lot of hands-on um, vocational trades you can take as far as um, woodworking, welding. I, I, work, I work on step-by-step. Step. I have taken a little um, metal working. I enjoy making flowers with the metal. The kids hate the cops, and many of the cops hate the kids, and that's not a good thing. I mean, how, we want our young people to be productive members of society, and you know what? Most productive members of society don't hate the cops. They see the cops as people that help keep them from being crime victims, right? We work with the police department. They gave us guns that were seized in crimes, right, or were bought in those buyback programs. Right. They destroyed the guns so they were inoperable, they gave them to us so the young people could turn them into artwork in what we call our Guns to Roses program. And we built a whole program around it. The police came and talked to the young people about gun violence. We brought in several victims groups where the victims had been either personally victimized or had loved ones who were victimized, generally killed um, with guns. And the young people essentially symbolically turned these, you know, these weapons that harm people into something that's beautiful. This building is designed to promote engagement between staff and young people and to keep young people from acting out by programming them, by helping them turn their lives around, not by physically restraining them. Yes, this, this environment did teach me a, a, a handsome amount of self-respect. There are a lot of good examples of positive approaches that are working to reduce recidivism rates of young people in the justice system. One approach is the Missouri model it's, uh, it's as one Blue Ribbon Commissioner in Washington, D.C. said once they came to Missouri and looked at the program, it's like an artichoke, layers and layers and layers of things to make the program work, but in the middle of it, there's a big heart. And you have to have a big heart in these programs to care about these kids. Now, we're not saying that the Missouri approach is going to work everywhere. What we are saying, though, is that that approach can be uh, tailored to each state depending on what that state's needs are. We barred liberally from what they did in Missouri, but we also put our own um, approach on that, and we call it the DC model. I have a hobby for woodworking. So when I get out, I probably tr try to look for, you know, get a, go into an apprenticeship, get a car, house, mm -hmm. job, live well for myself. The recidivism rate for kids coming out of Oak Hill has declined by 47% since we initiated the Missouri model at Oak Hill and now New Beginnings. Wyoming Kids Count, a project of the Wyoming Children's Action Alliance, working to improve and promote the well-being of Wyoming's children and families. Mom.